بسم الله وبالله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى أحل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Iman, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To all the mu'mineen mourning the martyrdom of Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi afdala salatu wa salam, I say, Adhmullah, ajurukum wa ahsan lakum al-aza. May Allah Azza wa Jal reward you all and may He accept your mourning. If one were to travel to uh, Najaf al-Ashraf, and visit uh, the holy shrine of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam above the main doorway uh, in the entrance uh, between the two golden uh, minarets a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is beautifully and boldly displayed and that hadith is uh, Ali ma'al haq wal haq ma'ali that Ali is with the Haq, that Ali is with Al Haq, and Al Haq is with Ali. The narration is quite important in regards to its terminology. Uh, what does Al Haq mean? We will find out in the review, inshallah. Nonetheless, the greatest uh, evidence for the truth in this narration is that when the Imam was fatally struck, by the accursed uh, Ibn Muljim, the Imam asked his killer such a question that would highlight the innocence and the justice of Ali ibn Abi Talib for eternity. He asked his killer, as recorded in some uh, narrations, What have I done to you, Ibn Muljim? Have I touched your honor, property, or person? Was I not a good Imam? Ibn Muljim responded shamefully, By no means. Only the judgment belongs to Allah alone, O Imam. Allahu Akbar. The man who fatally struck Imam Ali admitted that he had no justification for doing so. That Ali was killed for no error, no wrongdoing of his own. Amir al Mu'mineen then ordered his son Imam, uh, Imam al Hassan, alayhim as salatu wa salam, that if I recover from this wound, it will be my business to deal with him. If I die, kill him with a single stroke of the sword so that the divine law is carried out. A life for a life. If I die, kill him as he killed me. If I live, I will consider my judgment on him. Take care not to kill him with cruelty or torture, for I once heard your grandfather Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam say do not kill even a rabid dog with torture and pain. And while Ali alayhi salatu wa salam lay on his deathbed, milk was brought to him to drink. Instead of drinking, he said, send this milk to the stranger in the jail. His stomach is empty. This was Ali ibn Abi Talib. This is why Haq Righteousness, justice is intertwined into his very existence. And thus today's book is The Sacred Foundations of Justice in Islam The Teachings of Ali ibn Abi Talib which is an anthology of essays written by M. Ali Lakhani, Raza Shah Kazmi and Leonard Lewison. The main objective uh, of this book is to explain the concept of justice in relation to its metaphysical necessity as found in the intellectual uh, treasure that is Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi wa salatu wa For those of you not aware of what metaphysics is, metaphysics is defined as a branch of philosophy that examines the nature of reality including the relationship between mind and matter, substance and attribute, fact and value, God, uh, the creator and creation, etc. So moving on, what is meant by justice and what does it mean to be just as written in this book? 
by fulfilling the rights of everything and everyone, one is just. This uh, right in Arabic, in Islamic terminology, is called Al-Haq. In plural, it is called Al-Hukuk. Uh, and Al-Haq means right, but it also means the truth. In accordance to Amir al-Mu'mineen, God is not only Al-Adil, uh, just, but He is also Al-Adil. Or justice. He is justice himself. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus the source of al hukuk rights of all creation stems all the, the rights of all creation comes from the Almighty Himself. Thus justice is none other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Now how is justice related to truth and the very structure of reality? Justice requires for hakuk to be paid, to be, to be fulfilled. And what are hakuk as answered in the previous question? They are not only rights, but also truths. Therefore, without justice, therefore without truth, justice cannot exist. And thus, since there is only one God, Allah, who is the creator of all, He is also the divine reality, which in its essence is the truth. Hence, ignorance of the truth of reality is the source of all injustice. Thus, enlightenment of the truth, being aware aware of God, allows for a state of justice to prevail, of harmony and equilibrium. The entire universe is in a perfect, just state, except for planet Earth where we reside, wherein man is given free will. Thus, a messenger, a guide, is needed, uh, divine revelations are needed to enlighten mankind of the reality, the truth. If not, if not, not only is justice not being implemented, but existence in itself, the existentiation of the Almighty would be put in question, in jeopardy. Thus the Almighty sent prophets, generation after generation, 124,000 in total, culminating in the person of Abu qasim Muhammad uh, ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the last and greatest prophet. And the message culminated in the form of a book, the Holy Quran. It was up to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to deliver the message, spread the message of the Holy Quran. Whereas it was up to his successors, chief of them being Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam to expound upon the message and to explain what justice was not only in the human sense the worldly sense but also the metaphysical sense thus the first two authors of this book uh, M. A., uh, M. Ali Lakhani and Raza Shah Kazmi utilized the magnum Opus of a Sharif al Radhi, the Nahj Blaga, which we reviewed a few nights prior, uh, the collection of Ali ibn Abi Talib's sermons, letters, and utterances to discuss upon the given topic of justice. Whereas the third essay, uh, author Lewison, continues the discussion but instead uses mystical and Sufi sources to develop uh, his thesis. Nonetheless, this book is rather uh, complex, and I won't be doing justice uh, to it if I continued any further. Therefore, I urge you to get a copy yourself, and inshallah, that would be of greater benefit. Of the three essays, I highly, highly recommend all of them, but especially the first two, uh, especially if you're looking at the topic with a pure she interest which I assume you are. Nonetheless, I also tend to stay away from uh, perennialists, and it seems that this book uh, is from that group, but in uh, honest, the essays are worthwhile, therefore I found no qualm in sharing this specific work. Also, for those uh, interested in art, this book uh, has placed a small 
a very nice collection of uh, works here and there in it, so that's a plus. And uh, being a 90s kid, uh, the aura around the drawings of the Ahl Bayt uh, looks similar to that of uh, DBZ fighters. So maybe the uh, Japanese found uh, art inspiration from the drawings of the Ahl Bayt. Who knows? Allahu Alam. Anyways, that concludes uh, tonight's review. If it was of any benefit, please, please remember me in your prayers, and I truly need them. So, till tomorrow, Salamu Alaikum and Fiyamanullah.